Sounds good. Just a few seconds. We're going to play a pre-recorded video from Patrick, the marketing director of the company. Here we go. Yeah, guys. My name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here at Art Storefront. Been doing that for about six years now, and that means I've been working um, on solving the problem that is how do you sell art or photography um, by best leveraging marketing and digital marketing in particular. And it's an interesting problem to work on. There's, you know, there's there's not that many, you know art marketing agencies, for instance, right? Because it's a very, very hard problem to solve. Selling art and photography is not like selling every other item out there. Um, a lot of tradecraft, a lot of nuance to it. In addition to that, I've been running three of these sessions since a little bit before the pandemic. So, you know, year and a couple of months now. I don't believe that there's another human being on the planet that talks to more artists and photographers on a week in, week out basis. I have now at this point heard it all, seen it all, uh, you know, niche selection, uh, uh, pricing, sales, Facebook ads, branding, how to negotiate with the galleries, pricing, markup. I, I, have, I have heard and been through all of it over the last year. And in addition to that, we have uh, like a little bit over 5,500 customers now. And one of the things that we, we do a great deal of is studying the ones that sell the best and studying quite in depth. Uh, for instance, who's capturing the most emails? How are they doing that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Who is the best on Facebook? Who is the best on Instagram? What are they posting? What kind of activity are they getting there? Who is selling the most art period? Who is selling the most classes? Who is selling the most originals? Who's selling the most commissions? Metal prints, canvas prints. And you do all of that collectively. And why, why am I bringing all of this up? I think I can help you. I think, I think today's Q&A after, after I'm done with the presentation can be insanely valuable. I think if you're struggling with something, I probably have a solution that can put you on the path. And I mean that in the biggest non-sales pitch way ever. I don't care if you ever do business with Art Storefront, if you ever become a customer, I want the session to be valuable. Um, I wanna try to get you on a path to, to growing your art business to where you want it to be. I honestly believe that I can help you. So the Q&A will happen sort of after the presentation and love for you to think about whatever questions you have, whether you've never sold your art before and you're just trying to get into it, uh, whether you had robust sales pre-pandemic and the pandemic crushed you, um, whether you're struggling with a, a question of knee selection, what style should you be doing, or you're struggling with you know, how to price your work, or you're struggling uh, with how to get attention uh, to your work, which let's be honest, 100% of you guys are struggling with that. Every single solitary artist and photographer is struggling with that. But point being, um, have your questions ready and we'll get into the Q&A after the fact. But I wanna start with sort of this new concept that I've come up with and I call it the art selling pyramid, okay? And I sort of stole it from um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I don't know if you've seen this pyramid, right? But in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, you've got the physiological needs at the bottom, right? And the concept of the pyramid is you have to sort the blocks on the bottom before you can even contemplate sorting the blocks on the top. And the physiological needs are first, right? We have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to do that daily. That has to happen every single solitary day before we can even contemplate working on safety and shelter and money. And then you go up the thing and it's love and belonging and esteem and self-actualization. You can become a great person and all of that jazz. So let me give you the art selling pyramid, okay? Borrowed from Maslow. Same thing, pyramid, got to sort the bottom blocks, up we move. And the bottom block, the first block is attention. And I know, without equivocation, that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has an attention problem. What is attention? It is the eyeballs that you need to be able to sell your work. It is people knowing who you are, seeing your work, uh, interacting with you. And we live in a, you know, in, in, in a world right now where attention is the currency of the land. It's not dollars, it's attention. You have the attention, you can do anything. Without it, um, you're not in the game. D does the best art that's being created get sold? No. The best art that's being created that gets seen gets sold. And attention is every single solitary one of our problems. And just like in Maslow's Pyramid, you have to sort it daily. You have to be working on getting more of it daily. It is no different than eating and sleeping. And I look at this little pyramid and you know, a, a perfect way for me to explain it. Do you know who some of the most powerful women 
not just in the United States are, but in the entire world are, it's the Kardashians. You want to know why? They have attention, okay? Any one of those women, any of those surgically enhanced women could decide to start painting stick figures tomorrow and sell $35 million worth of art in the first year. Why? Because they have attention, okay? They understood what the currency of the land is. When you have the attention, you can do anything. Attention comes in two forms, rented and owned. Rented are YouTube subscribers and Instagram fans and Facebook followers, any social media followers you have on any of those sites. Why is it rented? It's rented because you don't own it. They can change the rules at any time. It's still very important, but it's rented. The other kind of attention, the owned attention, really email addresses most importantly. Secondarily, snail mail. Um, and for some people that do text message marketing, it's phone numbers. But you have to work on building your attention day in, day out. It is a quotidian job. And ultimately, it's the biggest problem that every single solitary one of you on here have. Some of you think you have a website problem. Some of you think you have a pricing problem. Some of you think you have a problem negotiating with galleries. You can't even have any of those problems until you solve the attention problem. The attention problem is the whole ball game. And when you understand it, you start getting intentional. You start working at it. It is no different than eating and sleeping. What did you do to acquire more attention for your work today? If you're not working on that, then you can't even have any of the other problems. Um, next block, okay, after we solve the attention situation, we're working on it. It's a constant battle. It never ends. The, the outside of this block uh, is number one and two here, and then I'm going to get into the block. Number one is the business model, okay? I believe that an artist or a photographer, if they want to build a successful business, has to understand the business model. The business model is selling direct, by which I mean you, the artist, the photographer, selling directly to your end customer. You retain the data on your end customer such that you are able to market to that customer in perpetuity. Many, many people, the way that the industry worked traditionally forever was people that did, did, did not retain this information. They sold through galleries, or maybe they did the show in their circuit, but they weren't the best at keeping up with these people and marketing to them in perpetuity. I got this book that I cite all the time, and it's by Wyland. Uh, he's the, Wyland is the whale guy, okay? And don't worry, I'm gonna send you links to this. Um, but he wrote this book, he sells it directly on his website, He's, he's, depending on who you talk to, he's the number one selling artist in the entire United States, probably even the world, to be honest with you, because of, of his business model and what he's done. And he talks in that book about this concept called a collector list, okay? And for Wyland, a collector list are buyers of his art that sell, or that buy in upwards of seven plus pieces over the course of a lifetime. And he treats this collector list like VIP. They are, his collectors might as well be staying in the Four Seasons. He reaches out. He, he gives them special access to things. He likes their social media posts, and he continues to build that list, okay? And fundamentally, it is one of the single solitary most important things any art or photography business can have. Collectors surface, you market to them in perpetuity, your prices continue to go up, they go along for the ride. Some of these people will buy in upwards of 20 and 30 and 40 pieces throughout the course of your life. And if you are not building that list, it's sort of like you're working a job and you're not putting any money away in a retirement account. It's almost like a 401k that just pays every single solitary year. And I can go into some detailed examples, but the goal is you come out with a new series. Uh, you, have a, you have a show, right? Uh, whether it's a photographic series or, or, or it's a, a, the series that you painted. You'll start out, and your collector list will maybe buy 2% of the show or 5% of the show. And your goal is just to build that list such that the percentage of the work that they buy goes up and up and up. And I've seen customers that I've worked with recently where 40 to 50% of the show is bought before anyone even sees it by their collectors, just gone. So you created 20 pieces, 10 are gone instantaneously because you have been cultivating a collector list because you understand the business model, okay? And it is... I mean, we're gonna get into it, but it is so fundamental. And I've been doing this for a long time now, okay? I've talked to a lot of people and it breaks my damn heart because on a regular basis, people are coming on these calls, okay? And they're in their late 40s, late 50s, late 60s, late 70s. They are at the top of their game. They have honed their craft to the greatest it's ever gonna be. And guess what? They didn't understand the business model. And guess what? They didn't keep a collector list. And so guess what? The pandemic hit and all their offline revenue sources, poof, are gone. And they're coming on this call and they're going, Patrick, and this is how I envisioned it. They had the corner office, floor to ceiling windows, the giant executive desk, the big leather chair, 
And I'm telling them, I'm sorry, you're out of there and you have to go back to the mail room and you're pushing the cart because you did not cultivate this list. Okay, you did not keep a collector list. You did not work on your marketing. You did not understand the business model. What do you have now? You have nothing. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Wait the pandemic out? Like half the galleries are closed. The ones that are still open are renegotiating the split from 50-50 to 60-40 because they have a hundred different artists that they wanna pick from. Go back on the show in their circuit. That's wonderful. That does not pay if it's not at 100% attendance. How long is it going to take for the show and their circuit to get back to 100% attendance? We don't know, but it's not going to be instantaneous, right? So really, really passionate about the business model. Really, really passionate about the collector list. I, don't, I, th I think the minute you understand that, you're, you're, you, boy, are you in a great place. Boy, are you in a great place. You're building it. It takes time. Okay. That's the outer shell. The inside of the block, three ways to sell art. There are three ways to sell art, okay? Every single solitary artist, my argument, and photographer needs to understand the three ways to sell art and needs to be applying them in their business. Number one, best way to sell art. Trick question of sorts. Everyone knows the best way to sell art. It's in person, face to face. It always has been, it always will be, okay? In person, face to face is the best way to sell art. Anytime you have the ability to sell art that way, you do that. Problem, we are all of us geographically fixed on this planet. We all have to sleep. We can't have 15 conversations at once. So the third way to sell art, and I say third because it's the least important, is via your website. You absolutely have to have a website. Uh, the website solves for these problems. Uh, when you're asleep, 15 people at a time, and for many of the geographic problems. The second way to sell art, okay, the newest way to sell art, the one the entire art selling world is trying to figure out right now, uh, uh, the greatest advancement in selling art since forever is exactly what we're doing right now. It is selling art via live video in either a one-to-one -one fashion or a one-to-many fashion. A one-to-one -one fashion. I go to Antonio's website. Antonio, these pieces are very interesting. What is that one behind you? I would like to buy it. Can we talk about it? Antonio goes, Patrick, no problem. Let me set up a Zoom call with you. I'll show you a couple of pieces and we can talk about it. I can get to know you. That is the one-to-one -one fashion. The one-to-many fashion, okay, which is mega interesting as well, is this concept of a live art show, okay? And if my, what am I doing? There we go. So I have a couple examples of this I'm gonna show. Um, this is a painter in his garage studio. He has some works that he's trying to sell. He is streaming this to Instagram. He is streaming this to Facebook. He's streaming it to YouTube. He is holding the works up. He's talking about them. People can leave comments. They can purchase them. This is one particular type of these sales. Uh, this is this is a, a, a customer and a good friend of ours named Matthew Locke. We've run a number of these different initiatives with him. In addition, okay, to this, this concept of doing it in your studio, what happens if you have an actual show? He had an actual show in the middle of the pandemic. Now, attendance was limited. A bunch of people couldn't travel, so the attendance of the show was light. He still sold a bunch of stuff. The day after the show, what do we do? We turn the cameras on. He grabs a glass of wine. Where's this ridiculous sleeveless shirt? I always make fun of him for the sleeveless shirt, so I can't help it. I think it's funny. Um, and what is he doing? He's walking through the show, and you notice people are leaving, leaving comments. We're highlighting the comments. He's walking through the show. He's explaining each of the pieces, okay? So my point in showing this is this is the new, and I've got another one here too. I can just, I can rattle through some of the examples. This is crazy, but this is absolutely the future of selling art. It is the next best way, and when we contemplate... Um. Let me mute this, and let me but I'll just give you something to stare at while I rant here. You know, if selling art in person, face to face is the best way to sell art, then okay, everything that we do digitally tries to get as close as possible to that. Okay. And in what would be the ideal way to sell art? Let's just say it's an art gallery that you have that you own in your hometown. Okay. People can come in, they can get to know you, have a conversation, they can buy the art. For all the people that can't geographically do that, the next best way is this via live video. Again, one-to-one -one or one-to-many, a group show, right? And it's so close to the real thing, it's amazing. You don't have to leave your hometown. They get to know you, they get to interact with you. They feel like they have a bond with the artist. It is the future, full stop. And what's interesting is the entire world is trying to figure this out right now, okay? The entire art selling world is trying to figure it out. Your industry doesn't have a lot of reports. There's two big ones, okay? There is the Art Market 2021 report. They do one of these each year. It's from Art Basel and UBS. 
I'm going to send you links to the report. I want you to read it. It's amazing. It's incredible. The, 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 the disclaimer on it is these guys report on the top 1% of the art selling market, right? Like the highest of the high end, the top auction houses in Christie's, the top auction houses and the top art selling dealers and the top galleries and stuff. But the report is still very, very relevant. Okay. And, and the link will send you, you can, you can download the entire report, which I recommend you do. I think you'll find it really insightful. Um, but they have these key findings too, which is like this snazzy little web page they built to talk about it. And so I can go in here, I can explore this thing. We've got some lovely little graphs, but you read this report and what they call it, and I'll quote, um, chapter five looks at the online art market and the rapid evolution in sales in 2021. The chapter shows how the dealer sector shifted sales online in 2020 and the development of online viewing rooms, ODRs. Do you know what online viewing rooms are? A snooty way to talk about a Zoom call, okay? A snooty way to talk about exactly what we are doing right here, right now. So this is the future of how to sell art in, in, in an incredible, incredible fashion. I, I, I always feel like a bit of a Yahoo to share numbers, but I'm going to share numbers because it's going to give this whole entire thing some teeth, okay? So Matthew Laka, longtime customer, great friend. Normally does the full dog and pony gallery shows in the middle. So this was on June 9th, 2020. He did two of these over a 15 period, a 15 day period. He sold 62 pieces for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian from his basement. No 50, 50 split direct. Didn't have to leave. Uh, this is his garage studio. It's where he paints. Didn't even leave his, didn't even leave his living room. This gal, Meg, also a customer. She was moving studios, legitimately moving studios from one studio to another. This was about a month ago that we ran this. And, you know, just to underscore my collector list, okay. This particular sale was teased on a Friday. On Monday, she emailed her collector list. Her collector list bought 46% of the show. She sold a little bit less than, I think, 76 different pieces for $15,000. Now, the pieces in this particular show were like the color studies, right? They weren't like the full buttoned up pieces. I'm trying to get to one where she's actually holding one. You know, they were color studies, they were sketches, they were smaller works, right? Um, you know, stuff that was just involved in it. But the, the, the point is, this is absolutely the future. It is, it is such an incredible way to sell art and photography. The entire world is trying to figure it out. You know, you get, you get people using various different, you know, at the snooty end, it's OVRs, online viewing rooms, or, or the art fairs and shows that are trying to keep the booth deposits. What's their line that they love? We're going to have a virtual art show, right? Everyone is trying to figure this out right now. I do not know what floor this particular elevator is going to go to. My guess is it's going to go very, very, very high. What I'm saying is right now, this elevator is on the ground floor and the doors haven't even closed yet. The whole world's trying to figure this out. And there is so much trade craft to it. I can't even begin to tell you. Um, you know, this particular Zoom call, I have all you guys in a Zoom call right now, right? This is also being streamed to two YouTube channels, to a Facebook channel, to Twitter, uh, uh, all at once, all simultaneously. Everyone is trying to figure this out, and it is the most effective way to sell art, period. And so step one is becoming aware of it. Step two is starting to practice it and put it into practice. And I guarantee you there's probably not a single solitary person on this call that is doing it. And, you know, people ask, what is it that you do at Art Storefronts? We teach our customers how to sell art and photography in the most uh, uh, advanced ways possible. And because I don't care, 90%, I, I tell people these things, 90% of the people will never, ever even do it. So I don't even care to give away the tradecraft. I'll give away the tradecraft right now. So my sleeveless associate here, Matthew, is using wireless Apple AirPods connected to his iPhone, which has this stream going out live on Instagram. We are leveraging software that is streaming it, that's putting in this little, this little title here, right? And his logo and, you know, the banner at the bottom to inquire and it's pulling the comments in. So cell phone, ear pods connected to Instagram on the phone, laptop, uh, computer, Facebook, personal Facebook, YouTube account. All of that goes down all at once simultaneously. And you can see there's numbers here if the number two thing goes away. He's even got little numbers here. Why? Because the people on Instagram can't see the graphics that we have on the screen. And so they need to know, okay, was that number two or number three? You can't really see it, but it's like right behind here. There's like a little thing. Yeah, there it is. See, number five. And we're on number five. So everyone knows. There's a million little things like that. What is the best combination of the technology? How do you announce it? What do you do during the course? And don't worry, I'm going to send you guys 
excuse me, I'm gonna send you these shows after the fact so you can watch them and, and pick up what you like. But this is absolutely the future, you guys, and it is completely changing the game and you don't need to leave your house and there are no boothies and there's no loading up the car and, and driving somewhere and staying in some crappy hotel and eating crappy food and then coping you're gonna see an ROI. There is no limit to the amount that you can run. It is the most uh, uh, beneficial use, highest ROI use of an artist or photographer's time uh, uh, I could even imagine right now. It's not even close. And again, whole world's trying to figure it out. So those are the three ways to sell art. I gotta get back to my pyramid. You have to, have, you have to be running all three and, and you have to be doing all three consistently all year long. So we start by constantly gathering attention. We start by recognizing the business model collector list as well as the three ways to sell art then we get to the top of the pyramid which is everything else what do i mean everything else you have a brick and mortar gallery that's working out for you that's bringing in revenue to your business fantastic we love revenue i have never met a revenue source i don't like keep it going but it's in addition okay not in lieu of working on attention not in lieu of working on the three ways to sell art and building your own collector list what if it's an online gallery maybe it's Saatchi or Fine Art America or Redbubble or Etsy or any of the others. Is it bringing in revenue? Fantastic. I've never met a revenue source I don't like, but it's in addition to everything else, okay? It's in addition to getting your own attention. It's in addition to the three ways of selling art. So too, if you're doing the show in Thera Circuit, we love the show in Thera Circuit. It's fantastic. I can't wait for it to come back. It is a great way to build attention, uh, but it's in addition to those two. You understand this pyramid, okay? You start working on this pyramid, and you are going to be on the path towards building a successful art or photography business. You don't, and you don't control the rules. You do not control the stakes. You can have the rug ripped out from underneath you at any point in time, which I've seen again and again and again on these calls. And you know, one of the, one of the things that no one talks about, okay, and, and, and does not get mentioned a month, uh, enough, three of these a week for a year and a half, okay? That's not hyperbole, that, that many of them. Every single solitary week, there are people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and I would say once every two weeks, somebody in their 90s comes in on these calls asking questions. And so why do I bring that up? Understand the perspective of how long you guys are gonna be artists and photographers selling your art or photography, okay? You guys don't go through midlife crises. It doesn't happen to creatives. You don't decide all of a sudden you're gonna stop being a painter and you're gonna go rent jet skis in Florida for the summer and that's gonna be your job, okay? So when you have the perspective figured out that you are going to be working at this for the rest of your life in your 90s in many cases, you, you, it underscores how important it is to understand this pyramid, to start working on this pyramid. And guess what? It's not gonna be easy at first if you're just getting started. It's going to be a pain in the butt. You know, I'm looking at Rick there, and Rick, if you have not been building that list the entire time, and I'm telling you, you have to learn how to email market and social media market, and you need to start doing it on a regular basis, that could be frustrating, but it's not frustrating when you got another 25 years of growth in this doggone business. So what does Art Storefronts do at the end of the day? We teach you how to do the pyramid. Yeah, we give you a website, and yeah, we put you into a university where there's no graduates because the learning never stops. That's really, the, in, in, in a nutshell, who we are, what we do. All right, welcome everybody. Um, as Juan said, uh, my name is Joseph uh, Vasquez. I've been with Art Storefronts, goodness, about five years now or so, and uh, talked to so many artists. Um, I mean, literally thousands, artists, photographers, uh, galleries, I've uh, talked with them all. And so, yeah, happy to come on and answer some questions and uh, yeah, talk about maybe where you're, you're stuck or issues you're having with your, business and marketing and get you guys some answers and some help tell you about us if you got any questions for that as well and uh want to help me man the chat as well if anybody's got any uh questions you can raise your hand uh you'll see that on the uh on the zoom that option to put your little hand up if anyone gets brave and wants to turn their camera on you can also just wave or, or you can drop questions in the chat but yeah we, we can kick it off um if you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, it's an exciting time right now. We are in the fourth quarter. Um, if anyone's a newer artist or hasn't really tried to sell their art yet, we are actually right now heading into the biggest art selling time of the year. Um, it's awesome. All of your big holidays where people are pulling out their wallets and buying art and filling up their walls are, are hitting. I mean, 
Christmas is coming, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. There's some other ones sprinkled in there. So all the marketing is really kicking off um, and getting started. So it's exciting. Also, if you guys see, probably see it in the news, Amazon and some of these other companies are, uh, I think I saw already Amazon's doing some of their Black Friday stuff already right now. And so again, that holiday kind of gets moved further and further and it's a longer window for you guys to be active and, and sell. So when you have a good marketing plan, um, which is something you definitely want to get, um, as well as like mentors, like people who you can turn to when you have questions and need help, and then a store where people can sell your art. Um, you know, those things together, it's kind of like your little ecosystem to help you be successful. So, um, well, cool. Well, I think we might see some questions in the chat. Let me see that. And again, if anybody wants to raise their hand, I can get you some answers. Let me see here. What type of camera with audio would you suggest for the Zoom calls or demonstrations? Um, yeah, Juan saying use a, a webcam. Uh, the one on your computer is fine. Yeah, at this day and age, just cameras are really nice. Um, and then, yeah, with the same, the mic on there would be fine. Uh, again, uh, it's uh, just encourage you to try it. Get out there. Uh, Carolyn asked that. So don't mean to call you out, Carolyn, but yeah, definitely go for that. that that's awesome. Like get it out there, try it, uh, try and run a little special, see what kind of results you get. The first one's a little scary, but after that, you'll be great. So get used to it. You, you find it's not so scary. So um, how many works of art? Uh, do you suggest, and oh, she doesn't have a camera. Carolyn, um, are you in here? Can we unmute you? Do you have a mic? We can chat and answer your question a little more. Let's see here. I just unmute her, Joseph. Okay. Hey, Carolyn, do you have a, do you have a mic? I should. Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm I'm great. I'm great. It's a it's a it's a beautiful Wednesday here. So, um, I don't know what part of the world you're in. I, I'm in I'm in Austin. So yeah, yeah nice yeah, sunny weather. You're where? We're in Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're just a hop, skip, and a jump away. So awesome. Well, cool. Well, um, artist or photographer? I don't have a camera on my computer. Oh, that's okay. Um, I guess, are you meaning for going live? Yes. I don't know, one. Art shows or. I yeah, I will, I will usually just recommend you if you're, you know, so inclined, if you don't have a camera, then you, you probably need to purchase a camera. And that nowadays is super simple. What you need to do is just basically do a search on Amazon or maybe go to your Best Buy, the, the nearest buy, Best Buy that you have at your place and just look for a camera that's just basically HD, high definition camera. And, and that's all you need nowadays. You don't need to you know worry too much about it. Just a simple HD camera will do for your shows. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Juan, what do you think? Could, could, a, could they pull it off with if they have an iPhone? Yeah, yeah, as well. If you have an iPhone or, you know, an Android, you can do a live show with your phone user, using Instagram or Facebook. And I will also do, right? As mm -hmm. Joseph said at the beginning, we just highly encourage you to, you know, run the first one or maybe run a couple with your phone. And then if you get used to it and you like the results, you can go ahead and purchase a camera as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that'll make it easy. Um, you can get started and yeah, I don't know if you have a, a phone stand for the house or tape it to a broom or something, keep it from falling over. But yeah, you can, you can set that up and uh, yeah, just give it a go, give it a run. Um, you were also, or go ahead. The other question I had was how many works of art do you think you should have in? I, I know right. that sounds dumb, but I've never done anything like your business. Yeah, no worries. That is not a dumb question. I bet you if we took a poll in here, a lot of people would kind of raise their hand and say that, that was maybe a question I had too. So you are not alone on that. That's okay. Um, just a few pieces. Um, generally, you know, we have people come on board, you know, if you're a photographer, they've got, you know, sometimes they think they need thousands of pictures or hundreds of pictures. Um, an artist, you know, sometimes they think they need five, 10, 50. I've heard all kinds of different numbers to get started. And the reality is, you know, we've got like oil painters that come on board and one painting can take 80 to 120 hours. So it can be a lot of work. 
um, just to get one and time consuming and a lot of people have other jobs and pain on the side. So it's hard to create at the volume you think you, you might need really just a few pieces. Like if you have a couple pieces to sell, like if you, even if you had like three to five originals that you're like, if someone said, I'd give you money for these, I'd give them to them, then you could get started. You know, the reality is you want to set up a store, have pieces, you know, a couple pieces for sale, but you want to be marketing them, right? You want to talk about the art as you're creating more pieces. Part of our marketing plan will teach you how to be marketing those pieces. We have a lot of artists come on board and they're, you know, just have a few pieces and they're creating more and they're pre-selling these other pieces because the marketing plan really helps you with that and getting that exposure. So that's why, you know, even if somebody says they have a huge body of work, we say, hey, just put a couple pieces on the store to start because adding that art is a marketing opportunity. And so we really want you guys to capitalize on those. You know, it's just another reason for you to put yourself in front of your audience, let them remember you, because that's what you want. You want to be on their minds that way when that wall space opens up behind them or they remodel or, you know, maybe they're buying for Christmas, like that's coming up that they think you, they shop you and, and they uh, maybe see a live and, and pick up a piece. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, well, I have you. Did you have any other kind of questions? Did you just find us recently or known about us for a while? Oh, no, I've been tracking you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome. Glad you, glad you could pop in. Um, any other questions? Yes, I do. On those, I'm into the metal and the glass and the print. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm in Oklahoma and I have no clue. I'm sure they're not in Oklahoma for the shipping that I saw you all had and the creating of the prints. So my question is, where do I go to get the specs that the camera has to have? Because I thought I could have somebody professionally shoot it with much better equipment than I had that mm -hmm. I could do okay. that. I where to go with. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, no, that, that, that's okay. Um, there's a couple ways, and just so everybody knows, there's a couple ways you can get the files for uh, print on demand, and uh, which is what you need, like the high res file that the printer prints from. Um, one, you can get your camera and photograph it yourself. We do have an article on our blog uh, that one of our photographers put together um, that, that'll kind of cover that. So it gives some people some guidance. So we'll, we'll plop that in there for everybody. The other way, pay someone to do it, kind of like you were thinking, or get it professionally scanned that you could always Google somewhere local and find someone to do it. That's usually the most expensive route. So I kind of say maybe I recommend everyone go down the other avenues first, because uh, if, you know, if you can do it yourself, that'll save you some, some money. Um, with that, so the files for us, you can actually do a really big file. You can go up to a hundred megabytes. So if they, if you do have someone take the photographs for you, go ahead and let them give you the biggest file they can. Um, but then maybe if you can also ask them, hey, could I get it at a, up to a hundred megabytes as well, which is a really big file. Um, and that's all you need. Yeah, once you upload it in our technology with our stores, it analyzes it and populates all the sizes. Um, this, this is probably another question you might have had or going to have. Um, it populates it and it won't let you offer anything bigger than it would actually print as like a fine art print. So a lot of people are worried about offering pixelated pieces. Um, that doesn't really happen here. So our technology takes care of that for you. So it's really nice. Okay, well, I, I don't want to monopolize everything. So. You're all right. You're right. I'll hit a couple more. And then if you think of another question, don't, don't be a stranger. Happy to get you some answers. So, um, and then you can always, you know, you and everyone else can always reach out and uh, put in a demo request or just say you want someone to reach out and chat on some more questions and uh, someone on my team will reach out and, and, and help you out. Um, let's see here. Looks like someone was asking just about our general pricing. Um, to get started with us. So I, I can cover that. Um, just so everyone knows, if you just hopped in here and just found us, as far as what we offer, we are like an all-in-one type solution for artists and photographers specifically to uh, you know grow their business and give you those things that we see everybody needs to be successful. So one, it is a website that's a store specifically designed for selling art. So there's hundreds of features in there, image security, uh, print on demand, kind of like we were talking about, uh, you know, Carolyn asked about, and 
advanced wall previews so they can see it on the wall and things like that. Um, but then also it's a marketing plan because some people already have a store, uh, you know, want to get a store with us, but doesn't matter if no one goes to your store. So it's like marketing plan. How am I going to get my art in front of people? So that, that's what we do. We have thousands of clients, um, Pat and our marketing team, they do research, they see what's working, turn it into like a literal marketing plan. It's every day of the year, if you would like, if you have the time um, to be getting your art out there, what to do. And then also we have workshops similar to this one for members only, where you can actually go in, ask questions to our marketing as well. Kind of like Pat said in his video that uh, learning never stops here. So um, yeah, so it's marketing plan, ongoing consulting and a marketing plan all in one. So, so it's great. Um, that said, the minimum to get started with us, generally the regular pricing is $1,750. Um, we do have it where you could get started as a one-time activation as $1,000 right now and get going for the fourth quarter. And then $44 a month. So that's like our base option with like essential features. And then we have a higher end range that goes up to on the high end, generally a $4,000 one-time activation. That's discounted down to $2,800 right now. And then uh, that's a one-time fee. You don't pay that again. And then $59 a month. Um, so different kind of ranges for people to get started financially. Ultimately, a little more detail, just so you guys have a little context on the difference. The higher end that's discounted down to the $2,800 one, one time right now, and then $59 a month, that's everything. That's every feature, bell and whistle, all the advanced like wall hanging type preview features. Um, including all future features. You just get them. It's really nice. Um, we just, that's not in everybody's budget. We get that. So we have some options where you can financially break it up, start as low as with the discounts, the thousand one time and then 44 a month. And then at any time you can kind of pay the difference uh, to hop up to the other levels. So just uh, come in wherever's comfortable, but you know, it's a great way to equip yourself with a proven marketing plan right out of the gate and a store that's literally built and optimized for, for what you guys are selling and then looking to get your art on more walls. So hopefully that helps. Um, of course, uh, pop any other questions, but just while I'm on that topic, like if you guys want to put in and, and have our team reach out and answer questions, um, if it's something you really want to evaluate, they can find a time to do like a full kind of demonstration walkthrough with you, you know, jump on a zoom like this and take you through the store and explain the features and show you how to upload an image, kind of show you all that stuff, show you what the marketing plan currently looks like. It's just some more detail. And then uh, you guys can always come on board and, and they'll explain all the promotions and the different like options there. And it'll be crystal clear and you can see what works best for you. So, but cool. Well, I'm, uh, I feel like I'm ramming a little, little bit, but uh, let me see here. We got any other questions? Any brave souls that want to turn on? the old camera and say hi. Let me see here. Oh, nothing. All right, Juan, you got anything on the uh, on the socials? Nope. So far, we're good with socials as well. All right. All right. Well, let's see here. William has a question. Do we help artists who already sell with a modest following? We've got a pretty good amount of Instagram followers and other platforms. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you have a bigger following and you're selling a lot, you generally do want to try and come in on the higher end if you can. That way you have just all the features to help you maximize your opportunities. But yeah, we, we have, uh, I mean, if you are already generating traffic, I mean, William here, do you want to unmute? Here, let's see if he'll unmute. We can talk about his setup and what he's got going on. There it is. Can you hear me? Yeah. How are you? Good. I can't see you. Um, uh, all right. So just a, just a quick uh, point of reference. I'm a professional artist who's semi-retired now, but okay. I represent my son, and he's uh, he, he sells about five to ten pieces a month. Okay. But we're looking to dial it up. Okay. Where do most so of his is sales? That, is that? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it comes. It it comes through uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Nextdoor are predominantly the ways that we get sales. 
Okay. Are you, um, does he have a website or do you guys have a website for your art and his art? Yeah, we have, we have a website too that, uh, yeah, it's blakemunch.com. Okay. Gotcha. Well, are you getting sales through the website as well? Yes, but I'd like to jack that up. Okay. Well, cool. Well, yeah, if you already have sales and you already have traffic, generally when people switch, they see an uptick um, just because you're going to have a better buying experience and answer more questions that people have when they're buying art. Um, you know, buying art, it, it's not like a coffee mug or, or some of these like tangible things that everybody knows, right? Um, they have more questions like sizing and things like that. So if he's already selling and you already have traffic, you know, adding the maybe more variety with prints. If you add print on demand with the originals, the, you know, wall preview type features, things like that yeah, will we, help we more only people. Sell, we, only sell, we only sell originals now. And I think that he's probably missing out on a, uh, a G clay or a print market, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted to add that, you can, but uh, either way, yeah, this could help you. Absolutely. The technology there in the beginning will be, great a good boost especially this time of year but then you know building your following even more right getting more emails getting more social media followers that this is built to do that and then if, if you guys are already a little more advanced in your setup um, we have a whole university basically full of uh, articles and things to teach you more advanced things um, that you guys might be able to do because you have a bigger following um, that someone in the beginning might not need those courses yet. Um, so yeah, th there's a lot of different things and ways that we could still help you. Absolutely. Uh, well, my, my objective would be to bring it to the next level with them. And that would be, uh, you know, I agree with some of your philosophies on the fact that you know, the art world is shifting mm -hmm. and so many things are being done with, you know, online. But what about, uh, you know, the whole digital art being sold out? Do you have any input on that? Uh, I mean, what do you mean? We do have digital artists that use our platform and sell well. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying, what is it? Uh, fungical coins. <laughs> the NFTs. Okay. NFTs, yes. I got gotcha. you. Part of my friend. No, you're fine. Um, a lot of those, we have a video on, on it where uh, our CEO and, and uh, head of marketing talked about it. Um, check it out. You can check it out. It's, it's a distraction, unfortunately, at the moment. You know, we, we keep an eye on all those things and, uh, you know, our marketing team, they test a lot of stuff. It's like, we do all this research for you. A lot of people don't realize that you're like, working with us is like partnering with a company that literally has like a whole marketing team just building out what's working for artists that are selling. And, you know, that, that might work for some of the big names right now, you know, but as it changes, if that becomes like really takes off, then we'll start to find ways more to implement that. But as of right now, it's still pretty wishy-washy. A lot of people say, you know, that, that could all just kind of fall apart. So, um, yeah. So what would you recommend then? So, all right, so you asked my question. I, I don't want to waste your time, and I know other people may have questions for you. So mm -hmm. if there's a – my son's a successful artist now, but, mm -hmm. but not to the point where he wants to be. Yeah. So he, he makes a living. And he's, he's doing, you know, selling X amount. Uh, you know, he sells some, a thousand, his, his price ranges now are 1000 to $10,000. And, you know, the high end doesn't happen all the time. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's, 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 that's dream cheap. That's dream cheap. But he does sell for that occasionally. Mm -hmm. But uh, his baseline price of 1000 sells. And so that's great. Does he fit into your model? Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we have artists that sell originals from 500 to 5,000 and 10,000 to 25,000. We have people who sell 20 to $50,000 originals through our platform. 
Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's it's everything. We've had people sell twenty thousand dollar originals through their websites with us. It's absolutely. Yeah, it's just another. You know, that's the thing. If if you're charging a premium like that, I promise you, they want to see it on a wall before they buy it, right? They want to use the augmented reality and like put it in the space. Right? It's a lot of money, right? Um, in the old days, you know, we have a lot of clients when they come on as another benefit using those features saves you a lot of time too. You guys might run into the instance where someone's like, "Hey, I'm, I like this 10k piece, but I kind of want to see what it looks like in my room. Can I?" send you a picture, maybe a Photoshop it on there or something. Um, we had a lot of clients that had to do that kind of work. It's someone who's serious. It generally, that effort turns into a sale. But here, you know, it's automated. It's just nicer. And it's a really premium buying experience. Like if you are going to up his game, you need to make sure he's shown like a legitimate artist. And, you know, we can always get you examples of our websites. But that's why people can spend 20, you know, $50,000 on a piece through a website. It's they want to see, hey, this is like a legitimate artist, with a trusted site, um, and then they feel more comfortable with those features and, and the buying experience. So yeah, this will definitely help you up your game, and you guys can start to work in it because we do. We have artists that sell, you know, some people who do this as a hobby, retirement, that kind of stuff, extra money for the family or travel. Uh, we have people who maybe they just want to do five, fifteen k a year through their sites, and if they're happy, we're happy. But yeah, we have people who make their living with this and, and build their business with us who, you know, we have Nat Geo guys uh, for the photographers. We have successful artists that do 100, 2000, or 100 to 200,000 a year through their websites with us. So absolutely. If, if your goal is to get there, this is a great place for you guys to build that. Absolutely. Because we're just honed in on exactly what you guys are selling. You know, if you're going to partner up with a company, especially for the long haul, you want it to be a company that you know, is when they add features and when they do things and when we add marketing things, they're all literally designed for selling art, you know, because selling art, that's not like what other companies need who sell, you know, couches or ceiling fans or any of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. You guys should really like look, look at this and we can get you example sites and stuff like that. You should check it out because, yeah, this can help you. Absolutely. So I'll tell you what, I, I appreciate your information. I, I agree first of all, wholeheartedly with the fact that selling in person is very important because even when we're not in person, but we deal with people one-on-one -on -one in a communication, that's what sells the work, so. Oh, yeah, no absolutely. Questions. And, um, you know, these things, they need to, they work together. You know, our marketing plan, it's got guidance on our offline stuff, you know, on how to get more contacts and emails offline when you do shows or gallery showing, things like that. It's not just online. We want to help you with the whole business um, because your on and offline things should be like this. And it's designed to, because absolutely, if you can get your art in front of people in person, that's always a good thing. We always encourage that. But also we know how buyers work. You know, that's what we look at. Someone who sees you at a show, maybe they don't want to buy because the it's a present and the spouse is right next to them or their significant other and they want to go home and buy that piece, right? They're like, all right, that's the one. That's what she wants. I'm going to get that one later. And yeah, so just making it easy for people to purchase your art and, uh, you know, get a bu good buying experience on and offline. That's that's what it's all about. And then getting it in front of more people. One last, one last, more one last question, my friend. How, yeah, uh, yeah. how do you deal with, how do you, because, uh, my son also gets a lot of commission. Okay. So how does that happen with your platform? Yeah. So generally with a commission, um, you could have a page that you, you can do a couple different things. You could have a page just showing examples and information and details about the commissions, you know, lead times, that kind of stuff, and then have a form that they would fill out because usually they're going to want to talk to you guys on that. Uh, so they could fill out a contact form. We do have some people who sell commissions that maybe it's like a set size at a set price and they just do a high volume of them maybe um, who will just let people pay for those through the website. You could do that as well, um, depending on the setup. And again, we can always look at it for what works best for you guys. It might make sense to just have a contact form, but absolutely you can do that. Mm -hmm. We also get artists okay. who do murals and things like that and they'll have a whole kind of section dedicated to that. So very similar as well. 
And what are the average sizes? This is probably irrelevant because there probably isn't one, but the average sizes, because my son now has migrated to larger formats like six feet by eight feet. Okay. You mean for originals? Yeah, for originals. I mean, what is the, what, what, yeah. Or so, what what do you what do you see? I mean, just your feel for the market. It's more about the consumer's budget than like okay. than than more like there's a lot of homes out there that need a five by five or something like that or a five by eight like giant painting. It it's more like people shop what's in their budget, right? So like if he only moves to like large format pieces, he is kind of alienating a little bit those buyers who might fall in that one to one to 5k range, right? Because they can't afford the 10k of the higher, bigger pieces. And so now mm -hmm. he has nothing for them to purchase. So that, that's kind of what happens, right? You think about your audience and your followers and your buyers and what's going on with them, you know, financially, uh, you start to lose them potentially, right? And that's why you having different sizes, you hit different budgets, a lot of people don't realize that. And, and when you hit more budgets, that's why we even have some clients who we've added the ability for people to buy merch, right? Because there's also people who can't buy, you know, the, the one to 5K, right? So now you have other things that hit that. So if he really just wants to stay large scale, then you probably really should take like offering prints more seriously because that way that large piece, it takes them longer to make, but financially like he's going to get a lot more out of it you'll sell the original you'll be able to continue to sell prints and now mm -hmm. you're heading you're hitting different wall sizes for people and different budgets so that way you're really covered and anyone coming to your website there's something they can buy and that's why again some people even add merch we have mugs and all kinds of other stuff that you could flip a switch and add um and again you're just hitting more budgets the more his art is out there the bigger his name is and the more expensive um, you can charge or the more higher price point you can jack that up as well. Uh, so last, those things last, last question. Thank you. Completely yeah. agree. Last question. Uh, and I appreciate your patience. The, oh, no worries. Uh, for, for your, what I used to call she clays or what he would call, or you may call prints. Is there, can you do different sizes from a specific work of art? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind so of like what. Do, so, so say a painting is a 30 by 40. Can you do smaller and larger sizes of that as G clays or prints? Mm hmm. You yeah. Can. So, so, so you could do a. Is it just reduced down? How does that work? Yeah, it kind of kind of goes to what I said a little earlier. So, like, Right, I heard take, that. That's why I'm asking. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So, so let's say you, you take that. Let's say the big five by eight foot piece, right? And right, let's say right. you have exactly. a exactly. Thank yeah. You. So you, you get a photographer to like professionally photograph that, of or course. you guys could do it yourself. Right. Once they have that file, you can upload that, and it's going to let you offer all the sizes that fit the same aspect ratio, the five by eight. So it's always going to be That's like right. the art, the way you intended or he intended it to be seen. We're not going to like there's no chop it up. There's no degradation in quality once you lower it down or whatever. No, no. And so then it would offer all the sizes there. And then you can delete sizes if you want to. Um, you know, like if it was a square, there'd be a whole bunch of options. So you can delete some. But uh, yeah, it would populate that. I, again, I don't know. That's a pretty big painting. I don't know if a print would get uh, bigger with that just due to the uh, printer limitations, right? But uh, but yeah, you could do some pretty big prints. Yeah, I know. But my son, my son sells more of his work or smaller. You know, he also sells you know eleven mm -hmm. by eight and a half too. So it's okay. you know he does he does he does a lot. Actually, he sells he sells a lot of those uh, Hitt hitting more budgets. Yep. Yeah, but and they're only a thousand dollars. So it's mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, that that's a that's a honey hole for him. And yeah. People so, buy people buy multiple of them. So, so yeah, he he shouldn't abandon that. I wouldn't completely abandon that. I would do that, 
and he can slowly make the big ones as well. Um, on the smaller ones, again, depending on the file, you might not be able can to they, go, can they go super up? large. That's, right. Yeah. What I mean, could, what, what, could it, what could an 11 by eight and a half go up to? Just out of, I mean, you may not know this, maybe too technical. It just depends on the file. There's just, there's too many variables for me to give you like an exact answer. Like take, for example, if somebody maybe had it professionally scanned, you might be able to get a little bit bigger. Uh, oh, we can get, we can like get a drum, we can get a drum scan. That's, I'm not worried about that. That's fine. Yeah. It, it just, it depends on the file. It really does on like how big it would go, but something smaller probably wouldn't go, you know, you're not going to get like a five by eight foot print out of that. No, generally. no, no. I'm yeah. just saying, could it, go up, could it go up to a, you know, let's just triple that to uh 33 by 26 and a half. Could that happen? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, you would just want to get, get a file and test it. But your tool, your tool would be able to say, yes, it works. Is that correct? Yeah, like if it if you uploaded the file and it doesn't offer really big pieces, then that means it, it's not going to get bigger than that with that file. Okay, but if yeah. it uploads, then it will say this will reproduce it. Mm -hmm. It'll just show you all the size options that it would work at. Mm -hmm. That's it's cool. really simple. I love that. It's nice. Actually, I love that. I love that. Yeah. What a great what a great feature. Yeah, and because. Well, it's really, it's nicer than I'm even explaining because it, it populates the sizes. Then it also will take the cost of the print and mark it up, whatever profit margin you want and like set the pricing for you. Uh, and then it's available for all the medias with the frames and everything. It's nice. Yeah. And like that kind of stuff, like what I just described for a lot of artists on a, like, I don't know what your website's with. If you're trying to do that, it's a nightmare. Because every media and every single size, if you did like metal paper canvas and five sizes, you have to make 15 products for each piece of art. It is a nightmare. So with this, it's just done. And right. set we the don't, pricing we don't, and no, you move on. We just sell originals now. So this yeah. would be a really great toy to have. I agree. It's oh, yeah. I think, I think it's going to open up a lot more options for you. And, you know, sometimes artists can be a little weird about offering prints here and there. You know, that the truth is the... The Mona Lisa is a uh, open edition print and the original's priceless. So don't lose sight of that. <laughs> if you sold a million prints of one of his originals, like imagine what the original's worth at that point. Like right. it actually adds value versus, you know, taking away. So oh, um, I, agree. I have no problem with that. No, I, I love the fact that it populates the different sizes and gives you options for what you want to sell. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely you guys should look at it, check it out. And, you know, I, I can have my team reach out and kind of, of course, talk a little more, you know, recommendations for you guys. And wouldn't hurt for you guys to sit down and just take a look at the whole thing and evaluate it. So yeah, I, I mean, I have. I've been on, I, have, <laughs> I, I, I have people who have been sending me phone numbers to speak to them directly. So I've been on this before. And okay, good. I'm just trying, I'm just doing, you know, more of my due diligence, if that makes any sense. Yeah, well, well, thank you for stopping by. Always happy to help where I can. And What's your yeah. first name again? That's Joseph. Joseph, you have been so incredibly helpful. I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. That, that makes it worth it for me. So thank you. <laughs> that's we're we're, we're I, really here for you guys. That's that's what it's all about. So I appreciate that. You know what? Let, let me get out of the way so that I'm sure other people have questions. Awesome. Well, thank you, William. Thanks for thanks for thank coming you, in. Joseph, and you have a you have a around. great day. You too. Cheers. <laughs> well, here let's uh, check back into the the chat here unless somebody yes. raises their hand. Oh, yes, Joseph. So Ingrid said she has a question in chat. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute her to see yeah. what's up. Hey, Ingrid, you can unmute yourself now. Thank you. Um, you hi, go. Joseph. Uh, my question is the pricing that you just mentioned from the 1750 up to the 4000. I received mm -hmm. an email saying that you guys can build my website. What should I expect to spend with all of those features in addition to building a website? Would it be on that higher kind of $4,000 range? Um, us building the website is a, a separate service. Um, we have like a whole 
art like agency when you come on board with a slew of other services that you, you can offload other tasks eventually. Um, obviously those have separate costs, um, but us building like setting up the website for you initially um, is an option as well. It's available on any level. So if someone in here is like, hey, I don't have time, which we get a lot, or uh, that's not my favorite thing is to sit down and like up, upload and set everything up on the website, we can do it for you. Um, that service is generally 1500 bucks. Um, but if you got that email, then yeah, you got a special deal that you could do it for 50% off. So it'd actually be 750 for that. So if, uh, if you want like if the lower budget or lower end was what falls in your budget for anyone in here, it would be like 17, wait, what is that? A thousand. So yeah. So it would actually be 1750. Um, so yeah, basically for the regular price there, you could get us to set up the website in addition to getting access to everything. And then on the high end, it would be the, what, $2,800 plus 750 um, if you wanted us to build up the website for you. Wonderful. That that, yeah, that right. answers my question. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I've been, um, I've been really afraid to show my work online because I have never done this before. I just discovered I have a talent for painting when we were in lockdown last year. And I've been really struggling on whether to create my own website or sell on Facebook. And so I'm so thankful that I discovered your company because this sounds like it's going to fit every single need that I have. So I really appreciate your time and that you're willing to hold these Zoom calls for people like me that have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> that, that's okay. Yeah, it, it it is nice. Like you can kind of hop into something that's like, we've already tested everything and it's just like, hey, this is what works and you can just kind of run with it. Um, that's awesome. Well, what kind of, so just kind of painting acrylic, oil, what, what's the watercolor? What, what kind of paintings you doing? I always love to hear that, sorry. Oh, sure. So all of my art is retro inspired. It looks like it's from between the twenties and the seventies. And there was okay. a type of art, there was a type of art that was very popular in the sixties called gravel art, where they, you would actually take little pieces of gravel and attach it to canvas. So it would stick up off the canvas, you know, a little bit. And I wanted to recreate that look, but not use gravel because if you find pieces from the sixties, they're usually in pretty bad shape. So I wanted to create something that would stand the test of time and that could be passed down from generation to generation. So I have okay. recreated that gravel art look with acrylic. And I also hand sew on canvas as well. So my pieces take anywhere from 20 to a hundred hours to complete because it's, you know, hand stitching as well as this technique that I've invented with acrylic. So nothing, uh, my art doesn't look like anything else out there, which is really exciting um, for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to get started, but I've just been spending the last several months just getting inventory done, which with how long pieces take it, you know, it takes a long time to get five or 10 pieces completed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I guess I kind of mentioned this earlier. I don't, I don't know what, when you made it in, but you know, having a marketing plan and, and you should come on board because like having a plan as where you're creating those will help you know how to like showcase those pieces and you can start pre-selling those. And then also, you know, you actually could potentially actually still offer prints too. Um, a lot of people don't realize that when they start to kind of get into, you know, mixed media kind of things like you're, like you're doing, um, that guy, uh, that Matthew, that Pat talked about, you can't see it that well, like just through video, um, but, or not video, but like just through a still image, but his paint actually does come about an inch off of the canvas. A lot of people don't realize that, but through, you know, the marketing with the socials and stuff, people can see that. And, and it just wows them. So you, you actually have some like going video and things like that will literally do a lot for what you're creating. It's gonna be great. So definitely encourage that for you. Wonderful, thank you so much again for your time. I appreciate it. Of course, any other questions, just keep them coming. This is, uh, it's fun. So that's what we're, we're here for. So, well, cool, let's see here. Looks like uh, ooh, Melon, uh, Melon. I say that. I definitely could probably question. said that wrong. 
Um, I had a question. If you if you want to unmute, you can you can chat with us. We can make sure we're I'll answering the right so, question. I just a melon or melon. 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 I knew I was going to mess that up. Sorry about that. But <laughs> <Okay>. awesome. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, let's see here. We're. I was going to read your question out loud. So it appears you're a personalized marketing company for art and photos. I have a website like with another company. If I join you, can I utilize the marketing? If I keep my website, is this possible or do I get a second website? And I am interested in online live art shows and building my email list. Great. That's always what we encourage. And then our pricing is 500 to begin and 39 to 59 monthly. Um, the pricing at the minimum is actually a thousand uh, right now for our base option then 44 a month. Um, so that 500 is not an accurate number. And then now the web gives us much different info, just checking is correct. Okay, so I should finish reading that. Yeah, that's that's a old, old uh, information from like 2017, I think was the last time we had a uh, option at that level. We actually discontinued it because, you know, it just didn't have enough on it, we felt like for people to be as successful. So we just got rid of that option, honestly. Um, so it's 1044 on that. Now, um, you have a website. Um, I, can, I can talk as a whole for everybody and give guidance, but I guess, are you selling on your website right now? Like, do you sell art on there? Can people purchase your art? I'll, I'll give you a, yes, yes. a it's personal a real, recommendation for you. <laughs> the, the arts, uh, art, uh, the website itself is wonderful. It does so many things that you're saying you do. Mm -hmm. um, but your marketing is so far ahead of what I've heard from anybody else that I can see that's the, my main desire from your company. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, like a live art show, would I have to have a website with you to do that? I mean, some of the live art shows, a lot of that stuff you can do on, on the socials. And, you know, obviously our marketing plan tells you how to do those things. Um, it is nice to have a good buying experience for people to come back to. Um, so for you, if you are, like, if you have a website and people can buy on it and it works and it's selling, like people are buying yeah. through yes. your store, you know, you could come on board you could do the, the thousand and forty four, and you'd get access to the marketing plan and the workshops and the consulting. Um, there would be a website sitting there for you that you could use if you wanted to or not. Um, it would sit there, but realistically, what, kind, what name would it have? What domain name would it have? Or would I give you a domain name? And does that well, cost extra, or is it part of the um, forty four a month? It's just, Part of the cost mm -hmm. yeah the thousand and then 44 okay. a month is just to stay a member and you have the website as well it'd be there so if you ever wanted to use it you could um here's my my asterisk or my warning with, with what you're thinking the reality is we do have some people who maybe a commercial photographer that or they do weddings or whatnot and then they maybe add a button that says like shop art or buy art. And then it kind of comes to our store and our, our buying experience. You could always do that for anyone who has a website and maybe wants to use us also. We do have some people who come on board that, you know, we make you a temporary kind of domain name like art storefronts while you're setting up. And that way your other store is live and nobody sees this while, while you're working on it. And then the very last step is you can put any domain or URL on it. Um, so you get mailing.com yeah, or what, okay. whatever you want to use. Um, here's the thing. If anyone who's ever tried to sign up and keep, you know, just their website for selling um, and use our marketing plan, it's hard. We have hundreds, like I'm not kidding, like literally hundreds of features built into the website. So even on our base level, there's a lot. And so if we're like, you know, you want your marketing and your website to work together, if, if we're trying to get you to use like certain features that your store doesn't even have, it's going to be hard. Yeah, sometimes. I, I, I hear what you know you're what saying. I mean. You're, you're going to hit some some bumps where you're like trying to make your website work for selling art, um, and it's just maybe not really built for selling art. 
which is I, you kind know of what I, I'm finding out from you is that I need to um, look at your website, find out what your features are, and mm -hmm. get a little more familiar with art storefronts. I'm very yeah. impressed with all that you do, and um, I would have to save a thousand dollars at this point. Mm -hmm. but hopefully a couple of art shows and I'll be there. Yeah. And uh, I do some online art shows with groups that are very uh, fruitful. So that's good. That's great. Thank, thank you so much, Joseph. I really appreciate it. I, I, I thought that 500 and was a little light, but I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's... You, you, Google finds some information and they don't want to let it go. But yeah, it's uh, we, we've reported it actually to them that it was not accurate and they won't change it. So. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, so, that's awful. So, so it is what it is. Yeah. But uh, no worries. But yeah, no, that gives you an idea what you'd want to kind of save up or set aside uh, to get started and, you know, keep coming to the workshops uh, and these and asking questions so we can get you some help along the way. Our podcast and our blog full of free information. So just take advantage of those. You'll find some tactics and some tips that might help you get some sales. And uh, yeah, then you'll be a member in no time. So uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your help. You're welcome. You're welcome. Awesome. All right. Let's see. Juan, did we miss any questions in the nope, chat I've here? Been, I've been checking the chat. I think we're all covered in the chat, Joseph. I think okay. We're Cool, because I thought maybe I answered it already. I think Carolyn had another question. Yes, you're right. She had a question, but she left. She said she, left. she had to go. Yep. That's okay. She might watch the replay. Let's see. Do you offer a wall that with be. furniture where your artwork is put in the wall, or do we do this? No. Oh, okay. If you have one, is your system of letting or preparing the changing pictures? Cool, okay. That, uh, yeah, we have a wall preview tool um, that our stores have had. Um, it allows people to get size and scale uh, of your art and uh, change the wall color to what's in their home. Ours is really advanced. Uh, there are different, some different room settings, office and uh, living room, uh, that kind of deal. Um, yeah, so, so they can kind of scroll through, get a size, they can adjust the size, or if it's an original, they'll see the true size of how big the original's on there. And then, uh, we added augmented reality as well. Again, these features are a little more advanced, so more towards the, the upper end uh, of our pricing structure. Um, but the augmented reality is the one where they hit a button, they pull up their camera phone, and then they can actually see it live on their walls in their homes and like actually try it in the space. Really easy to use. There's no app to download or anything like that. So it just opens in the browser. Um, so it's a, it's a really nice, sleek thing. It tells them, hey, just stand... 10 feet from the wall and it's gonna be the proper scale. So uh, yeah, so Carolyn, we have lots of features to, to kind of help that. And it's it's really simple and simple for your buyers. That's what's really important too. So and we make it easy for them so they can buy as much as possible. So. April, April just told me that Carolyn is still here. So let me try to unmute her to see if she has any follow-ups with that. Let's see. All right, I think she's not around. Yep. Yeah, but we tried. Okay. Thanks for that, Joseph. <laughs> e for effort. There we go. So, well, cool. Well, some good questions. Um, I don't know. Anybody else got any last questions? Oh, man. Uh, there was a gentleman who, who left. I, I wanted to ask him if he had questions. He had some really cool glasses in his picture. They were awesome. Well, cool. Well, awesome. Well, I don't know if no more questions. You know, just last thoughts. Um, the time is now. This is, you know, obviously if, if, you know, our service is something that can help you out, reach out. We're happy to help you walk you through it, see if it's a good fit uh, for you. Because if it is, this is the time. If timing budget-wise not ready yet, things like that, we just encourage you guys to be active. You know, I'll be honest, I've talked to literally thousands and thousands of artists and photographers. It's like, if you guys do some marketing, there's not a lot of 
people who actually put that effort forward. They really aren't, um, you don't have a lot of competition. And that's kind of what we mean when we say that. I hear so many photographers say, oh, well, everybody's got a camera this day and age, but that, that's true, but not all those people are marketing. They're just not, I'm serious. Like if you guys put your art out there, you can do it. You can build a following. You can build these relationships with these collectors and, and find them. And uh, there's not a lot of people competing with you to do it. So that's, that's, that's the thing. And we just want to give you guys the path and the guide and the tools to do it, make it easier on yourselves. So yeah, come on board. But even if you don't like you guys stay active, keep the dream alive. You know, this is, this is your passion. This is what it's all about, you know, being on, on people's walls. It, it feels amazing. So I encourage you guys to pursue it, be active this time of year, you know, be posting on your social medias. If anyone shows interest, you know, tell them it's for sale. If you don't have a store they can buy on, just be active, get it out there. And uh, yeah, we could wish everybody the best. And uh, yeah, got a special going on. So come on board if it helps you. And other than that, Godspeed, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's You guys are seriously why we do this. And you know we're a company that we want to talk to our members and, and the people who are thinking about coming on board with us so we can consult you guys and help you. And, um, because everything we do is built to help you guys out. So it's really important to us. Awesome. Well, cheers, everybody. Have a great day and a, a good Wednesday, and we will see you soon. All right, cheers.